This is an experience that I had almost an entire year ago. My mother is a traveling nurse, and she often gets assignments in Alaska and other less populated states, so I usually travel three to four times a year to go see her. This was my first time going to see her in Alaska. She was staying in Fairbanks for three months. While she was at work, I would take her rental car and explore Fairbanks and the neighboring areas and towns. Side note, Alaska is very sparsely populated, and towns of just a thousand or more are considered somewhat large. One particular day, I decided to make the long day trip to Denali State Park via Alaska Highway 3, or Parks Highway, as it is often called. It's a long, windy stretch of road connecting Fairbanks to the outskirts of Anchorage, Alaska's largest city. Along the highway from Fairbanks to Denali State Park, you pass through three to four towns, the largest of those being Nanana, which only has a population of 365. Once you get out of Fairbanks, it gets really lonely. I remember driving 40 to 50 miles without passing another car. You can kind of get mesmerized by the beauty of the landscape and the snowy, icy mountains surrounding you and forget that you're in the middle of nowhere. Quality phone signal is few and far between when you're driving through this area. It was a weekday and off-tourist season in Alaska, so most of the vehicles I passed were log trucks or semis and the occasional regular motorist. It was early April, and there was still heavy-packed snow on the sides of the roads and in the forest and valley, but the roads were completely clear. From Fairbanks to Denali National Park, it's a four to five hour drive, depending on road conditions. My main goal was to see Mount McKinley, the tallest mountain in North America. I hadn't really researched much of how to see it, and it was harder to see it in April than the summer months. There's a road that leads into the National Park, where you can see a view of Mount McKinley, but I had passed it not knowing whether the road conditions were good. I had looked on Google Maps, and it showed that there was something like a scenic view or overlook that you see on American interstates sometimes. I assumed that you may be able to see Mount McKinley from there. If you go on Google Maps, it is across from Byers Lake Campground. The campground appeared to be closed or desolate, but there were no gates or anything stopping me from entering the area. It was at this point that I completely lost cell reception, and the GPS on my phone wasn't working. As I pulled into the campground area, there was probably 16 to 24 inches of snow on some of the roads there. Some of the roads had been plowed, so I assumed that there had to be people visiting, but there wasn't a single car or person in sight. There are a bunch of winding roads that almost resemble a maze and lead to dead ends at this campground. Now, for the entire four plus hours I had been driving, not once did I have any uneasy or bad feelings. When I'm usually in desolate areas, especially the desert, I have really bad vibes, but it wasn't like this in Alaska for some reason. That changed about 30 seconds into entering the campground area. Maybe it was the fact that I was turning into some abandoned campground, or the fact that I completely lost cell reception, but something just didn't sit right with me. Nevertheless, I was determined to see Mount McKinley, and I was trying to focus on that and find a good place to take some cool pictures. I drove down these winding roads and hit dead ends, and then suddenly it started to get really cloudy. I was getting more frustrated at not finding an area to take some pictures. And then, I realized that I was lost. It's not far at all from the main highway, but nonetheless, I was lost. I started to get really confused on where exactly I was, and my GPS wasn't working. I started to panic a little. I made my way down this dirt road to the lake, and there was a large opening. 
My bad feelings went away temporarily because the view was beautiful. The lake was completely frozen and behind it in the background was a small snowy mountain. The scene was just something straight out of a National Geographic magazine, so I stepped out to take some pictures. I stood there for a few minutes, just admiring the beauty of the Alaskan wilderness, and I was looking at my pictures to see if they were any good, when I heard this scream in the distance. It was a close scream, but yet it sounded muffled, almost like something was able to control the volume of their voice to make it seem far away, when in reality it was close. My heart started racing as I looked around to try to figure out what it was. Everything in my body was telling me to book it for the car and find a way out. But I just stood there, confused and kind of scared. I felt like I was being watched, and all the hairs stood up on my arm. I was wondering if it was a bobcat or a mountain lion, because they are often mistaken for women screaming. I'm aware of this. I looked out on the far side of the lake, and I see this person wearing a light orange jacket and jeans. They had a green beanie on their head. I waved at them, and they waved back immediately. At first I was super relieved. There was somebody else out here with me. But then, this overwhelming feeling of dread and terror entered my body. I was wearing a light orange jacket, jeans, and a green beanie. The person had brown skin like me. I'm half Filipino and half white. I couldn't make out facial features, but I felt like I could see the black hair sticking out from under their beanie, which is the color of my hair. I just stood there for a couple of seconds, frozen in shock and fear. I raised my arm, and the person raised theirs. I waved with my other hand, and they did. I noped right out of there. I hightailed it up to the hill to my car and basically did a donut in the snow, spinning my tires trying to get out of there. I started panicking and I was trying to find the exit. I saw a sign that was almost completely covered to the top in snow, but it had an arrow pointing to the left and that was good enough for me. I came out to the first part of the campground. It was a bathroom facility and office and had a veteran's memorial statue. There was this white owl just perched on top of it staring at me, with its head just sideways, like bending over. I found the way out and sped the entire way back to Fairbanks, checking my rearview mirror every ten seconds. I really don't know what to make of the situation. As I entered civilization, I calmed back down, and I didn't really have any other weird experiences in Alaska or anywhere else since then. I've considered the thought of it being a skinwalker, or an aswang, which is a Filipino shapeshifter in folklore. One of my friends said I probably survived a 411 case, which wouldn't be surprising to me, because there have been many of those in Alaska. I consider myself neutral on the topic of the paranormal. I think most encounters could probably be explained logically, whether it be uncommon occurrences, mental health disorders, or something of the sort. But I had an experience as a child that has opened me to the idea that there are paranormal events that are real. I remember it vividly because the event shook me up so much. It's not that intense of an experience, but it was very real, and I remember it clearly despite it happening well over a decade ago. I was sleeping in my room and I awoke to find a figure in my door. My room had a street light right outside the window and the curtains didn't block out all the light. It was lit enough to clearly see the silhouette of someone in my doorway, but not lit enough to see the details. I figured it was my mom. At least the silhouette looked like her. Being confused as to why she would just be standing there, I called out to her. There was no response. But before I could call out again, the figure turned and started to walk down the hall. Again, it's light enough for me to see that a figure is turning and walking naturally down the hall, 
just not enough to see details of clothing, face, skin, etc. I got up and ran after her. No reason for it, probably, just a groggy, panicky reaction. As I reached the figure in the hallway, I went to put my hands on its shoulders, and it vanished. Like, literally vanished before my eyes. I only froze for about a second before I bolted to my mom's room and slept in her bed with her the rest of the night. We've gone over the event. A common explanation is that I was dreaming, but I remember clearly being in the hallway, lucid as everything happened. I also did wake up in my mom's bed, and she confirmed that she remembers me entering, panicked. My mom has a ton of stories that give me goosebumps and are crazy scary. In one of her recurring nightmares, she has a doppelganger that haunts her, and I'm wondering if that's who I saw. When I was a kid, there was this kid who looked exactly like me. Not just witnessed by me, but by my grandmother as well. My first sighting of her was when I was little, and I was sitting in the car, just staring out the window. I looked up and thought I saw my reflection, so I just shrugged back down in my seat. But then I looked down and noticed that she was wearing a different shirt than I was. My grandmother also told me that she spotted a girl that looks just like me when she's been out. And just as she's about to call my name, she notices that the woman with the girl doesn't look anything like my mom. This didn't happen once I got a little older, but it always gave me the creeps. Maybe I have a doppelganger or something like that. Any thoughts as to what this was, or has this happened to anybody else? My house was being renovated to be sold, and in the meantime, my mother rented a house nearby my high school. The house was a white weatherboard house, had terrible carpet, seemed to always have slugs, and just felt old. I'm not certain if the house was haunted, but I had some experiences that I didn't otherwise experience prior moving into this rental. Before proceeding, I should mention that I do sporadically experience sleep paralysis, and I have sleptwalked once that I know of. But for now, I want to tell you about the doppelganger at the rental. One evening, I was in the bathroom straightening my hair. I left the bathroom to make my way down the hallway to the lounge room. Between the lounge room and the bathroom is a kitchen on the right-hand side. When I passed the kitchen, I saw my sister, about ten years old, standing just behind the boundary of where the kitchen meets the hallway. She was standing in the dark and looked a bit off-color, almost gray, and her face wasn't even visible even though she was standing immediately in front of me. I asked her what she was doing just standing in the dark. I got no response, even after calling out her name. I didn't think much of it, but I do recall seeing her blue dress as extra vibrant and the kitchen as impossibly dark. I shrugged my shoulders and thought it was weird, and walked down the hall into the lounge room. As I was walking into the brightly lit lounge room, my sister was on the couch, jumping up and down. It took me a whole five seconds to realize what just happened. I was not talking to my sister in the kitchen. There's no way that my sister was just in the kitchen, ran past me down the hall without me seeing her in ten seconds, and then proceeded to jump on the couch all before I entered the room. I was in shock, but I asked my sister how she got to the couch so quickly. She seemed genuinely confused, and said she'd been on the couch the whole time. The other experience was the girl by the door. This experience may possibly have been sleep paralysis. I'm not certain why, but I was sleeping next to my mom this evening, on the left-hand side. I guess I always felt uneasy in the rental. Anyway, on this evening I was fast asleep, and I had an unusual dream. In the dream the bedroom door was open, and standing in the dark of the hallway was a girl with dark shoulder-length hair and a white dress. The girl met my gaze and stared at me with an expressionless face. 
She took a step toward the bedroom door, and as she took a step, ended back where she started. Imagine a scene replaying of a person walking toward you, but it's like they're on a treadmill. That scene just starts over and keeps replaying. But on every single replay, the person gets closer. It's like the looped video gets closer to you. I was paralyzed with fear and I could only watch as each time she took a step, she would end up back where she started. Yet with each step, she got closer to the bedroom. This continued until she was in the room and then her movement changed. She started to move toward me and she appeared to be darting back and forth, frantically inching closer. Her expression changed with her eyes wide and she stood beside me. She glared at me and abruptly grabbed me. That's when I woke up. It had been a dream. I looked over to the bedroom door in relief. It was closed. But not too soon after, fully awake this time, the door opens and the girl is there again. There in the hallway. She immediately starts darting back and forward and lunges at me. I wake up again? I look at the door and this time she's in the room already and darts straight toward me and lunges at me again. I wake up yet again and straight away she darts and lunges. This happens about six times, each time moving closer, each time being more frantic and aggressive. The last time I finally woke up for real and I sat up in the position as if I was grabbed and woke up during the attack. My breathing was heavy and my mom who woke up said that I was having a nightmare. These two experiences make me believe that the rental had something freaky going on. And possibly the girl by the door and the doppelganger are the same entity. Anyone else experienced something similar to that? Do we think it's sleep paralysis? I reckon the dream of the girl was, but the doppelganger is harder to rationalize. This happened to my fiancé, but I was in the other room, and I heard the events unfold. So he was sleeping on the couch. I was sleeping in our bed off the living room. He passed out out there, so I turned off the lights and let him be. At around 2 to 4 a.m., somewhere in there, I heard him say, What are you doing? What did you say? And then a bang. He was wide awake and claimed that I walked into the living room across the kitchen, in the nude, and then I walked back across and I was mumbling something weird. He got up to push me a little to see if I was sleepwalking, and that's when I disappeared and he fell into the table, which was the bang I heard. I was in my bed the entire time and I didn't hear anything except for him falling. Also, I was not in the nude. Does anyone know what that could be? I thought maybe he was dreaming, but I heard him talking coherently and then get up and fall, and he claims he was wide awake. I'm definitely freaked out, so if anyone has any answers, let me know. This experience occurred pretty recently, so my memory is very clear in regards to detail. This past year was my senior year of college, and I was thrilled to be living with an alumni of my sorority, with whom I'm very close. We'll call her Abby. Abby and I weren't actually supposed to live in the apartment we ended up in. We were originally going to be living in a townhouse with two other girls but they started so much drama a month before we were supposed to move in that we had to contact our landlord to find a different place within their company to live. Thankfully, we found a two-bedroom, one-bathroom basement apartment in a quiet area off campus. The first month was fine and without incident. But as the days went by, some strange things began to happen in the apartment. One morning, Abby woke up to a kitchen cabinet open. She wasn't too concerned about that and figured that I had just forgotten to shut it the night before. The next morning, a different cabinet was open, and once again she shrugged it off. 
However, I went home one weekend and she woke up to find every cabinet in the kitchen wide open and the sink running. Needless to say, Abby was scared and spent the night at her boyfriend's. Two weeks later, we were watching TV and heard the bathroom door close. I tried to calm Abby down by saying that the fan we kept in that bathroom probably blew it closed. However, when we went to bed, we thought we could hear someone walking around in our living room. There's no way someone broke into our apartment and hid the entire day, only to come out at night to screw with us. I was home the whole day, and Abby was home from 11 in the morning on. That incident took place shortly before Christmas break, and all was calm in the apartment until February. Abby had gone home for the weekend, and I was home alone, relaxing on the couch and doing homework. It was pretty late at night, so I turned on the television for background noise and curled up on the couch to sleep. I woke up at 2.32 in the morning to see Abby walking through the front door, smiling but not saying anything. I blinked, still groggy from sleep, and I asked her if she was okay. She just looked at me and proceeded to take off her shoes and walk into the kitchen. Something about her just didn't seem right. Like this girl looked like Abby and walked like her, but it also clearly wasn't her. I asked her again if she was okay because it was so early in the morning for her to be coming home. Abby looked at me, smiled, and began washing something in the sink. Something inside me felt a profound sense of dread like I was in actual danger and I needed to get away as fast as possible. I went to my room and locked my door. My roommate followed me because I heard someone tapping their finger against the door. One, two, three, four, five times. It wouldn't stop. I didn't say another word because it felt like if I did acknowledge her, it gave her more strength. I know that doesn't make a lot of logical sense, but that was my instinct. I curled up beneath my blankets and stared at my bedroom door, almost waiting for her to kick it in. My eyes felt heavy, and the incessant tapping was almost like a metronome enticing me to sleep. As I drifted back to sleep, the tap seemed to slow down to a trickle. The morning after, I was groggy and exhausted. It felt like I had taken 20 Advil PM, but I remembered everything that happened the night before. Cautiously, I left my room and saw that Abby's bed had not been disturbed or slept in. I went to the living room and her shoes and purse weren't there. A cold feeling crept into my spine as I sent her a text asking if she'd come home that night. She responded that no, she hadn't and wouldn't be for another two days, but I checked the sink and the bowl that Abby had been washing had been cleaned and put away. I firmly believe that I was not dreaming or hallucinating, and I know that this wasn't some elaborate prank by Abby because she would never do something like that. I firmly believe that something took the shape of Abby that night, and that its intentions were not good. There were a few other experiences in that apartment, but nothing so dramatic as what I went through that night. I'm sure it's not as scary as some other people's stories, but for me, in the moment, it definitely was. This really happened, and it's one of the most unnerving things I've ever experienced. So it was the 4th of July, and my brother and I were setting off fireworks in the woods behind our house. We were passing back and forth an aim and flame cigarette lighter, and lighting firecrackers and other small fireworks. It was around 2 in the morning, so technically the 5th of July. I left to get something to drink, and left my brother there, lighting the fireworks as usual. I get back around 10 minutes later, and he asks me for the lighter. I told him that I didn't have it, I'd left it with him, and he was actively lighting firecrackers as I left. He says, yeah I know, but I just gave it to you a couple minutes ago, where is it? I know my brother, 
This isn't something he would lie about. We've talked about this many times over the years, and his story has never changed. The moon was bright that night. Bright enough to see by. He says he saw me, in my same outfit, same face, same hair, and everything. Come out, say nothing, and put my hand out. My brother assumed I was waiting on the lighter, so he gave me the lighter, and whatever it actually was walked away, never speaking a word. These woods were privately owned by my family, far out in rural Texas. Nobody else was out there, and if they were, it still doesn't explain how they looked identical to me. We continued setting off firecrackers until about four in the morning, having to use a short cigarette lighter because that thing stole the aim and flame. We never did find it either. A few years ago, when I was still married to my ex-wife, I saw my own doppelganger. My ex-wife was disrobing one night, and as soon as she got everything off and approached the bed, behind her was me, in shadow form, with a wide-eyed, surprised look, looking back at myself. Now, I've seen ghosts and UFOs, and I don't have any reservations about the paranormal, I'm usually inclined to believe the unexplainable, or at least have an open mind. But this one genuinely freaked me out. It was like me in the darkest tint brightness calibration before a video game. Was I scared? I mean, not enough to not continue with what we were doing that night. But I was pretty young and naive at the time. I've heard that it may mean death for the witness or something. Obviously, that never happened. Yet. But a rocky divorce and zero friends later, I can confirm a shitload of bad luck. Even got in an unwanted fistfight today. Attacked, even. Things are always happening to me ever since then. I guess I'm asking if anyone has any additional information on this. I can't find much, but closure would be nice. I've had a couple of experience with doppelgangers. The first was when I was about 19. I suddenly woke up from my sleep and immediately had a frightened feeling. I had a wardrobe in front of my bed at the time with a full length mirror on it. In the mirror, I can see my bed and the windows behind it. In the window behind me, I saw what appeared to be my mom, but she had a seriously twisted look on her face an expression that was creepy and that I've never seen on her before. She was staring at me in the mirror, and for a couple of minutes, all I could do was stare back at her in fear. I thought perhaps I had sleep paralysis, as I have experienced that my whole life, but it turned out that I could move, so I sat up fast and looked out the window, but nobody was there. I looked back into the mirror, and she was gone. It would have been impossible for her to go anywhere, as my room was on the second story, and the window looked out to my balcony, which is only accessible through my room. It's also unlikely that she was able to get onto the balcony through the house. She would have had to come through my room and open the incredibly hard to open, very noisy, banging balcony door that was behind my bed, right by my head. I got out of bed and went to check on my mom who was fast asleep in her bed and clearly had not been through my bedroom or jumped off the second story balcony to go through the front door, up the stairs, and back to her room in a matter of a minute or so. I turned all the lights on and I stayed up for the rest of the night. The second time was a few weeks ago. At first, all was fine. I was in bed, woken up in the night, and rolled over to hug my boyfriend. Immediately, I felt like it wasn't him. But I didn't want to believe that, and I just wanted to feel comforted. He was making weird noises, and I told him to stop being weird. He then spoke in a voice that was not his. I looked up at him, and he had the same twisted look on his face that my mother's had had. It was even creepier to see it up close. I said, 
You're not my boyfriend. But I was too scared to move. He tried to convince me for a bit, and I kept asking, Who are you? I got out of bed, terrified, and I just kept demanding, Who are you? You're not him. He then got up and started throwing and dragging me around the room while I kept crying, You're not my boyfriend. He managed to drag me out to the hallway, with many moments of pulling and fighting away and him throwing and dragging me. He was a lot stronger than my boyfriend was, and he was laughing, seemed disturbingly amused by all of this. I suddenly jolt and I am in bed sitting up with my heart racing. I thought, thank god, hopefully it was just a dream. But it felt so real, and I was conscious and in control of my actions the entire time, unlike even the most lucid of dreams. Then I thought sleep paralysis, but then how could I move and make decisions? After searching for a phenomenon like this, I've seen a little bit about astral projection. Could that be the case? I thought I would check to see if any of the details in the house were different to my potential dream, but they were the same, including the bumped frame on the wall that was crooked that I had not noticed the day before. I really hope it was just an incredibly vivid dream, but having had experienced sleep paralysis all my life, I'm pretty good at deciphering what is an awake hallucination or sleep paralysis and what's a dream, and it definitely felt like the former. Has anyone experienced something similar or encountered doppelgangers like this before? Does anybody know what this weird dreaming but feeling absolutely awake and lucid thing is? Any feedback is appreciated. It still haunts me. So, this really only started happening this morning. At around 6am, I got out of bed to get ready for work. While I was in the bathroom getting ready, my boyfriend was still in bed. Suddenly, I heard him, and it sounded like he was afraid of something in the bedroom. I walked back into the bedroom to see if he was okay. When I asked him what was wrong, he seemed pretty shaken up. After a few seconds, I was able to get him to explain what had happened. When he was just starting to wake up, he stated that he saw the spirit of an older lady that seemed to be cussing him out for no apparent reason. After he told her to go away, she did. But not long after this, while he was half asleep, he thought that I was laying on the bedroom floor and reaching up to run my hand across his chest. As he started to wake up though, he started to realize something about it was really off. He said that she was laying way too far away to realistically reach up and touch him at all. I mean, her arm would have had to have been like five feet long. And with that, he said that her features seemed kind of blurry. She also had a wide-eyed, emotionless stare, kind of uncanny valley-esque. He described it as if somebody had built an animatronic version of me. Later on in the day, after I got home from work, I got up from the edge of our bed to open the bedroom door for the cat. According to my boyfriend, my doppelganger showed up again, but this time she was standing at the foot of our bed and directly staring in the direction of actual me over by the bedroom door. From what we understand, whatever is trying to copy me is definitely trying to fool my boyfriend into a false sense of security. The bad thing though is that we're also pretty sure this is some kind of hostile presence. If anybody has any advice or information on what this may or may not be, especially if you know how to deal with it, we'd love to know. Any help or advice on this is something that would be very welcome. My coworker and I are curious, and a little afraid to be honest, about why we've been seeing doppelgangers of all of our fellow coworkers. I have seen every single one of my fellow night shift coworkers when they shouldn't have been there and weren't there, except for one. In fact, she's the only person that neither of us have seen a duplicate of. 
Both of us have made eye contact with at least one of the copies. They're around all the time. It's almost a daily occurrence at this point, and we just don't know what to do, what they could be, why we're seeing them, and what they might mean. If you have any information, please let us know. I have a doppelganger that's been following me for a while. The first story was when I was just about seven or eight. It was a summer afternoon, and my friends and I went inside our house to drink water and use the restroom. The restroom on the first floor is right beside the stairs, so when I got out, I saw my friends staring up, and they seemed really surprised when I came out of the restroom. When I asked them why, they told me that I had run upstairs and that they were waiting for me to come down. I told them it must have been my grandma they saw, but they both insisted that it was me. I was so young that it was trivial for me and I just urged them to continue our game outside. In the same house, I was a college student this time. It's a weekend and I just woke up and felt a call of nature. My room was beside the hallway leading to our second floor bathroom. So I went in there, turned the corner, and I saw our maid cleaning. I excused myself as the hallway isn't big enough and she let me pass. I then went to the restroom, and two minutes later our maid knocked and asked if I was still in there. I said yes, and she left. I was curious, and right afterwards I asked her about it. She was hesitant at first, but she told me anyway. She said she was waiting for me to wake up so she could clean my room. When I passed by her, she thought it was her chance, and went straight into my room. When she entered, I was standing there, my back facing her and she got creeped out when I was about to face her and she bolted out of the room. That's why she went back to the restroom to see if I was still there. The third story happened when I had just moved into a new house, sorting out where things should go. I think it was our second day there. We just finished breakfast and I volunteered to wash the dishes. It was just my mom and I that time. My mom then approached me and asked, were you here the whole time? I said, yeah, I've been washing dishes and organizing utensils in the kitchen. She said, then who helped me carry the mattress to our room? She had a very skittish smile on her face and was obviously scared. She swore that it was me who had carried it with her. But obviously, that was impossible. Finally, I've been sharing this story where I see fit and I'll tell it here too. I moved into a new house with a friend. It's just a small one-bedroom gated apartment. I was inside the room surfing the net and my roommate was in the living room watching K-drama. I heard the door open and close and the gate as well. After a few minutes, I heard the gate open and it was my roomie's boyfriend. He asked her where I was and my roommate told him that I had gone to my boyfriend's house. I heard them talking and I shouted, hey, I'm here. They both ran to the room and my roommate had this bewildered look on her face. I asked her what happened and she said, you passed by me and told me that you were staying at your boyfriend's, and I looked at you and nodded and you left. I told her that I heard the door and the gate close a while ago, and she said it must have been that, but obviously I hadn't left or spoken to her. Her boyfriend stayed over that night, as we were both pretty scared that the doppelganger would come back. This was six years ago, when I was in primary school. It was after lunch, and my friend and I were walking up the stairs to our classroom on the third floor. On the first staircase, we saw one of the two gym teachers coming down and greeted him. As we got to the second floor and up the staircase, I had a fleeting thought. Wouldn't it be weird if we suddenly saw him walking down again? But then, he actually did come down the stairs. My friend and I were so shocked, we just stood there gaping at him as he looked at some papers while walking down. He didn't really acknowledge us or seem to notice us staring at him. 
We were frozen until he disappeared under the stairs, and that's when I snapped out of it and peered down. I couldn't see him, but he might have just walked closer to the wall or in the middle of the stairs. I had half a mind to run after him, but I've always thought it best to not interfere with the supernatural. I had heard of doppelgangers before. I was creeped the hell out anyway. So we ran to our class, still trying to process it all, while repeatedly asking each other, did you see that? They were completely identical, except that one had papers with him. We debated him having a twin, but really that was just silly. We'd been at that school for five years and we never heard about that. Plus, they were wearing the exact same outfit, and the school only had three gym teachers. If they were, by some almost non-existent chance, actual twins, we would have heard of the gossip, or they would have walked together instead of one floor apart. We tried debating if he ran through the hallway after we saw him on the first staircase, but even if he was a gym teacher, there's no possible way, and there's no reason to go past us, run down a hallway and up two staircases, and then down the hall to meet us again just to freak somebody out. Maybe he did run up again to get the papers, but the time between meeting was at the very most 20 seconds. There was just no way. I haven't heard of him after graduation because we all drifted away, but I don't think anything happened to him. It was just weird, and one of my childhood memories that I think back on with curiosity. Another time close to that, we had an extra class day on Saturday. I took the morning off because of family business, but when I came to class, my classmates asked me where I'd gone. I told them that I'd never been there, that I took the morning off but all of them said they had seen me at class that morning. Apparently, I even went to the bathroom with the class's vice rep. I immediately had a thought and asked her if I was pulling my lips in my mouth. I had this weird habit of pulling my lip and side in the bathroom because I didn't want to get germs stuck to my lips and then lick them up. I know, it's weird. Anyway, she said no. She was genuine, and I could see the confusion on her face, like, what was that question for? She was a really serious girl, and wouldn't participate in a prank for someone she wasn't close to, if at all. In fact, the whole class couldn't be in on it, because that would be a really random prank. And even if it was, no one would ever really do anything like that. They just weren't that type. There were many divided groups in the class, so the chances of them all working together is zero. Especially against me who only hung out with two kids and almost never interacted with anybody. So, weird? If anyone has any encounters with doppelgangers, I'd love to hear about it. I'm not entirely sure if it was a doppelganger, but I really can't think of what else it would be. So, this happened a week ago, and my whole family is still kind of freaked out about it. Our last upstairs neighbors moved out about six months ago, and the house had been empty until about two months ago. We put it at about that time that we first detected the presence of our new neighbors. Now, we were close with the first family who had lived there, and they were tenants. They were moving out because they had bought a house of their own and we had even helped them with the process. This is an important detail, because on their last day there, I remember as clear as day my mother asking them if the original owner had found somebody else to rent it out. They replied that they hadn't, as far as they knew. We had never met the owner. The incident that I'm about to describe was all the more surprising, considering we had never seen a mover's truck or any other items being unloaded and moved, but we just chalked that up to our own ignorance. We lived in a huge apartment complex, after all. These things happen. Fast forward a month later, and we were already annoyed by their presence. We would hear loud footsteps, both running and walking, in the middle of the night, sometimes extending to the wee hours of the morning, the creaking of heavy furniture being dragged weird scurrying noises, like there was an animal with them, and on some particularly nasty days, 
even steel vessels being dropped, a ball being dribbled, a glass marble bouncing, or the ringing sound of a coin being dropped before it settled, and many other sounds we could never identify, but you get the idea. In case you haven't gleaned from this point on already, the walls here are pretty thin. On this particularly chilling day last week, it was about 11 p.m. at night. That's when we heard the first set of knocks. It was just a tiny rap of three, one quickly after the other. And you couldn't have heard it unless you were really quiet. They weren't so much knocks made with fists as someone using an object to probably tap on the floor repeatedly. So when that first set came, we were surprised because it was pretty late in the night and we weren't expecting anybody. Everyone was home. We waited a while and when we didn't hear anything again, we shrugged and thought it was a prank or a mistake and went back to doing our own thing. For context, we were not in the living room opposite where our front door was. We were at the other end of the house. So these knocks were louder than what you would expect to hear in case somebody really was at the front door. Half an hour later, we hear, yet again, another set of knocks, this time five, each one oddly drawn out and increasingly heavy. This is when we realized that it was coming from upstairs. Now, you have to realize that this did not phase us in the slightest. They were habitually noisy, so while we did freeze for a moment or two, we just carried on. At about this time, my parents start talking about how this was their last straw, and the next time they were to even so much as move, they would get put on blast on our building's WhatsApp group. The next and final set came an hour later. It was just two this time. Except they sounded less like knocks and more like sacks of beats being dropped. I think I even heard something tiny roll after that second one, but I'm not sure about that part. At this point, it was around 12.30 in the morning, and my mother really did lose it. She did what she had promised to do. She posted for all to see how rude our neighbors were, and how inconsiderate and inconveniently loud, and she went back to sleep. Now this is where things get really weird. My mom awoke to a flurry of messages asking her who she was talking about. One lady who lived on the same floor as our neighbors told my mom that nobody had moved in there after the last ones had left. On hearing this, we were all very alarmed and upset because the four of us couldn't have imagined the exact same things, right? My father completely flipped and banged on the door countless times to no avail. We did consider the possibility of squatters, but we could never verify because the owner wasn't in town and we would be breaking and entering if we tried to see for ourselves. We were convinced that it was very much real and had a perfectly rational explanation. But after that day, we didn't hear a single noise and the paranoia had very much set in. So we were always on our guard, ready in wait for when they slipped up. It's been a week now and I can't tell if we just experienced the weirdest glitch for two entire months or if something else is going on. So make of it what you will. Nobody believes us. Some even questioned why we put up with them for that long if we genuinely believed that they were a nuisance to us, and we don't really know how to answer that one. Maybe high tolerance? Maybe it's ghosts or some kind of haunting, but there's never been any issue with that before. Maybe it's a glitch in the Matrix, and they're from a parallel universe or something. Either way, it seems that our upstairs neighbors aren't real and we have no idea what to do about it. Over the weekend, I was out of dental floss. I can't stand that. So I looked around for a forgotten roll. I looked in my son's bathroom as well. Nothing. On Tuesday night, my son and I went shopping and I picked up a floss, Tom's, that I had never tried before. I grabbed one because I'm very picky about floss and I was not sure whether or not I would like it. My son then asked if he could get one too and of course I said yes. 
We go home and my son unpacks the groceries. The two boxes of floss are on the counter. I take mine upstairs, unwrap it, throw the box in the bathroom trash, and try it that night. I hated it. Last night, I go to floss again, and there is now a second one in the drawer. The exact same. I think, well, that's weird. Why did my son bring his floss into my bathroom? But I forgot about it because sometimes he uses my bathroom, so whatever. This evening, I'm cleaning up the kitchen, and there's his dental floss on the counter, unopened. I go back upstairs. There are still two flosses in the drawer. They're both completely new, except that the one that I have used has, of course, a slightly smaller roll. The containers are transparent so you can see it. But I had never tried that kind before, and I only bought one. So how did I end up with two? I hate to admit it, but I have often read accounts of things like this happening with more skepticism. I always figured that people just forgot that they had two of something, because the items are so often insignificant. But here I am, in the possession of a mystery floss. I'm kind of honored and excited by the possibilities of what this could mean, but that's my glitch story. One time I was in Russia. It was the first time that I had ever traveled there and I was 19. It was actually Ukraine. I found a bar that I thought was so cool. I met a girl there and we went back to her flat and hooked up. Six years later, I went to the exact same bar. I met another chick and I went home with her. Only it wasn't another chick. It was the same one as before. I didn't realize it until I was at her apartment. We hooked up and I left with my hair standing on end. She spoke Ukrainian, I didn't. I don't even know if she recognized me and it wasn't like I could ask her, so. There was a guy named Nikolai as well and I met him on both trips too. The first time I met him at a bar. The other time I ran into him on some side street one day when I visited for the second time. This is the second biggest city in Crimea, with a population of over 330,000 people. What the hell are the chances of this happening twice? Interesting. I have four kids. I know that I have four kids, but recently I just feel like there should be another one, but they're missing. When we go out, I head count and I get flustered because I can't find the extra one. I have to consciously remind myself that there are only four, but my heart just doesn't believe it. I had just put it down as one of those weird feelings and I pushed it aside. Then, my parents sent money to my kids. They sent $100 to each kiddo. They sent me $500. I called them and asked them why they had put in so much, and they were confused and said that they told me they were sending $100 per child. I reminded them that I only have four kids. They were silent for a moment and then just kind of laughed and said they must be getting old because they thought there were five. Then tonight, my daughter walked into the lounge room. She looked around and said, I know we're all here, but our family feels small. My son agreed. I hadn't said anything to anybody about my feelings lately because they already think I'm ancient and forgetful at 40. I don't really know what this means, but it's definitely strange. And apparently it's not just me. Does anyone else ever have these feelings? Was my other kid lost in a glitch? I don't know what it could be.
I'm not sure if this is considered a glitch, but most nights, and I mean not every night, I can hear people talking. I can never fully hear what they're saying, but I hear people chatting back and forth. I wish I could say I hear the same people talking, but every time I hear them, it's not always the same voices. I do live in a building with four other tenants, but the thing is, I usually hear this chattering at odd hours of the night. It's when my well-known neighbors are asleep. I work in a kitchen, and I usually don't get home from work until at least 1am, so I'm usually up until about 6. I could chalk it up to spiritual activity, but it doesn't feel like that. It's almost like I'm hearing a life that I've lived somewhere else, or that other people have lived here over the years. Like I'm hearing things from other dimensions, or past times. It may be odd to say, and I'm okay with being completely wrong, but it's as if the memories of these walls are speaking at night. The word is that the building I live in used to be a bed and breakfast, so this place definitely has some stories and has seen a lot of different faces in its day. It would make sense that I would be hearing different voices every time, but it's really interesting to me. I am very interested in learning about what it is I'm experiencing, so if you have any ideas, let me know. In June of 2007, I was at the hospital at 1 in the morning because my friend got his fingers caught in a taxi door, and one was visibly broken. The wait in the emergency room was long, and the vending machine didn't have any coke. The receptionist told me that there was another machine in the next building, which was always stocked because it's not as busy. The receptionist gave me the directions, and I exited the A&E department walked down two long corridors and an enclosed bridge which connected the two buildings and got to the other end. When I got to the other end of the bridge and opened the double doors, I was back at the emergency room entrance, which was impossible because I would have had to double back on myself. And to add, it was probably six minutes of walking. I've never been able to explain this. Everyone I've ever told has said that I must have been drunk or tired. Sure, I might have been tired, but I was not drunk because I was driving. I wish I could have found a way to get a CCTV of that night. I still can't really explain it, other than a glitch. I am a 30-year-old male. When I was in my early 20s, I had a strange encounter with a man who claimed to be from my future. I'm not entirely sure that this could be considered a glitch. However, this incident was definitely peculiar and I haven't been able to completely forget about it since. Admittedly, some details are now hazy as this happened to me over 10 years ago but I have tried my hardest to remember as much information as I could in hopes of getting some closure. Around 2011, I was taking Japanese night classes once per week at a local university here in the UK. At the time, my classes would finish at around 9pm, and I would usually return home via train. I was still living with my parents back then, and I distinctly remember having a small window of time to catch the infrequent night train back to my hometown after my lessons would end. It was winter, and I recall the station being busy with Christmas shoppers. I had unfortunately missed my usual train, and had to wait over an hour for the next arrival. I was looking up at the live departure board with frustration, when I was approached by a friendly American man in his early to mid 40s. I remember that he was underdressed for the weather, or even the season, as it had been snowing for days and was particularly cold outside. He was wearing only a baseball cap, a sweatshirt, and a light windbreaker. Nothing about this struck me as too odd at the time, as I gathered he must just be a tourist who had not anticipated how cold it could be. 
Back then, I was incredibly shy, and I wasn't the type to strike up conversations with strangers. However, I recall feeling entirely at ease from the moment I saw him. He was tall, athletic, and spoke with a strong accent. He was friendly and approachable. Nothing about him gave off any warning signals. If anything, I was taken aback at how unconventionally attractive he was. Our first interaction was brief. He initiated our conversation by asking if I had been waiting long. I naturally replied out of politeness if he had been stuck waiting for a while too. He was, in fact, quote, waiting for a friend and had just gotten into town. This quickly evolved into us both making small talk, with him introducing himself as John. Eventually, he asked if I wanted to grab a coffee on the account of how easily we hit things off. My train was due to arrive and I didn't have much time, so John quickly asked if I wanted to pick up where we'd left off again over coffee tomorrow. I agreed, we exchanged numbers, and I left to catch my train home. I remember after this instance, I felt a feeling similar to deja vu. It was like a wave of familiarity had washed over me. I was 100% sure that I had never met John in my life. However, I was left with this strange, overwhelming feeling after departing. I felt intrigued by him. When I arrived home, I received a few text messages from John and we agreed to meet up in the same location the following day. At this time in my life, I was still closeted and I hadn't come out to my parents as being gay and I wasn't prepared to tell them I was meeting with a stranger. I usually pride myself on being a good judge of character, and I would not have agreed to meet John if I hadn't felt that the situation was safe. After all, it was difficult to meet guys at that age, and I wasn't about to pass up the opportunity of a date with this handsome older dude who I just felt an abundance of chemistry with. However, I did make sure to let some of my friends know my situation, in case anything were to happen. The following day, John was waiting for me at the same location we had met the night before. Despite the freezing weather, he was still wearing the same light clothing and baseball cap. I can recall him being incredibly charming, and I felt the same overwhelming sense of being familiar with him from the moment we met. I was definitely curious, and I was eager to find out more about him. At this point, we couldn't decide on a location and wandered aimlessly around before deciding to grab coffee at a local Starbucks. As we started to make conversation, I noticed that he was only interested in talking about what I had to say. I remember that he seemed overly happy to be talking with me. When I would speak, he was often so excited that he would barely let me finish before moving on to another topic of conversation. I almost got the impression that he knew what I was about to say already. For instance, he knew that I had a sister before I told him. I also noticed that he would rarely talk about himself, often sidestepping my questions or changing the flow of conversation when I asked him anything directly. He was definitely quirky, and for the most part we spoke about our shared interests. I remember thinking that he was odd, but I definitely didn't feel suspicious of him, despite the fact that he seemed rather private. The only information I remember about him was that he was from America, but that he had been traveling for some time, the way he put it. He claimed to play several instruments and was in a band, and he mentioned that he had a troubled religious upbringing. However, this is where things get strange. John and I left the coffee shop and decided to go for another walk around the city. We spoke for a long time, and I remember that we'd been laughing a lot and generally enjoying the time we'd spent together. However, we eventually stopped along the riverfront that runs throughout my city, leaning over a bridge as we spoke some more about each other's lives. This is when John asked if he could give me a hug. I remember looking up at him, and his expression seemed genuinely melancholic all of a sudden. Almost bittersweet. Although I was feeling a little confused, I said of course, and hesitantly leaned in for the embrace. I remember that he hugged me incredibly tightly, and when we eventually let go, there were tears in his eyes. I asked him if he was okay, and asked what was going on. 
admittedly now feeling incredibly confused and a little bit concerned by what was happening all of a sudden, he said, you're never going to believe me. I can't quite remember the entire flow of the conversation that followed. However, I will try to summarize everything as best I can. We took a seat on a nearby bench, where I remember that his composure was incredibly calm, and he said everything with the sincerest conviction. He told me that he was somebody from my near future, and that we knew each other very well. He told me that he had traveled back in time to visit me. However, he was incredibly adamant about not answering how or why he had managed to do so, only stating that it was, quote, recreational, and that time travel, quote, doesn't work how we think, stating to me that he had only wanted to visit me once more, adding that I was much younger than he had anticipated, and that I looked so different from when he knew me. He almost hinted that he had found me at the wrong age. I could tell that there was a feeling of sadness throughout everything he was telling me, as he kept repeating over and over how happy he was to see me, yet he said everything with tears in his eyes. I instantly began taking everything he was saying as a joke, feeling skeptical and ready to leave immediately. I remember standing up and telling him that I had to go. The information was too much for me to process, and I felt the same overwhelming flood of deja vu creep back into my system. The sensation was so intense that I remember trembling as I stood up to leave, with the atmosphere around me suddenly experiencing a drop in pressure. This is when he took me by the hand and said, I'll see you again someday. I ran away without saying anything. I remember being so overcome by emotion that I burst into tears as soon as I was out of sight. Afterwards, I was so confused and disturbed by the situation, it took me days to process it all before attempting to articulate it to my younger sister and friends, all of whom remember this incident as the crazy tourist I went on a date with. However, 10 years have passed, and I can't help but feel affected by this incident. Every now and then, I remember the face of John and the strange feeling of contentment and familiarity I had around him. After our date, I remember trying to text or call the number that he contacted me on, only to be notified that that number no longer exists by an automated message. He had seemingly vanished without a trace, with no further instances of seeing or being contacted by him since. This definitely could have been a case of an individual who was clearly unhinged, but it was so eerie that I haven't been able to forget about it. I have always wondered who John was, or perhaps who I was to him in this possible future. Nowadays, I am currently in a happy relationship with my partner of six years, whom I have no intention of ever leaving. But every time I recall this enigmatic encounter I had with John, I can't help but wonder if I had glimpsed into a possible or parallel future, one where things have drastically changed for me on a personal level. I have so many questions surrounding what he told me. Was I still alive in his time? Were we romantically involved? Was he a future colleague or even family? Every time I recall these long distant memories, I'm overcome by an inexplicable wave of emotion, almost like I've lost something. It's incredibly difficult for me to articulate the feeling that I felt that night. I have never been able to forget about it, and I am entirely sure that I would still recognize John today if I ever encountered him again. This is the first time I have ever shared the full version of this story outside of my immediate circle, but after discovering the community here, I felt the need to share. Has anyone ever experienced anything similar? or have perhaps read other relatable stories, or have suggestions or ideas. I've felt almost haunted by this meeting since it happened, and I would love a little bit of insight from those more experienced in theories and concepts of time travels and glitches. A few years ago in college, I was on a dance team. Every fall, we would hold auditions, 
and a new girl would join the team. Her nickname to me is Panda, so that's what I'm going to call her for this story. She was really nice, but I also didn't think much of it, as she was just an acquaintance at this point. Anyway, I was going through some dark shit in college, and I was journaling one day. I remember specifically writing a line like, I don't want to be here anymore, and I don't know what to do about it. Immediately after writing that, Panda's name popped into my head. It's almost like it was implanted in my head, rather than a thought that came from the conscious me. I wrote her name with a question mark after it. I didn't really know what to think. It was entirely random to me. At this point, I hadn't known her well enough to assume that she'd been going through anything. I wasn't sure what made me write her name down after that statement, but I moved along with my journaling. Later that same day, our dance team met at a party, and I could tell that something was off with her. Based on the weirdness of journaling earlier that day, I felt compelled to pull her aside and ask what was wrong. It turns out she was struggling with self-harm, which I could entirely relate to based on my past. I was taken aback. That's a weird enough coincidence. But what really floored me is that right after she admitted that to me, she said, I don't want to be here anymore, and I don't know what to do about it. It was the exact sentence I had written in my journal with her name next to it with a question mark. I guess it could be considered a common statement, and I know that it's not the craziest glitch in the matrix if that's even what it is, but I'm also not somebody that expects things like this to happen to me. I know the universe is weird, but my life feels very average and normal. What are the chances that I would write something down like that with her name next to it, hours before it was said to me, accurately predicting who was going to say it? Ultimately, she and I ended up becoming best friends, and it was that day that made all the difference. But it still weirds me out to this day. My husband recently took an overnight job to help us out during the pandemic. He's only been there about two weeks and works evenings and overnights from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Last night was no different. He left home around 8.15 p.m. Our daughter, age 11, and I decided to make it a movie night. Around 11 p.m., I heard keys in my back door and the usual sounds my husband makes when he comes home. I crept out to the kitchen to make sure it was him, and it was. He told me he needed to grab his knee compression sleeve, walked down the hall, said hi to our daughter as he passed the living room, and went upstairs. He came back down, gave me a kiss, and left. We finished our movie and went to bed. In the morning when he got home, I made a joking comment about him being forgetful since he had forgotten his knee sleeve. He looked genuinely confused as I recalled the previous night. Our daughter confirmed everything that I said, but he was still just as confused as before. I pulled up our security motion camera on my phone to show him when he popped in quickly, but there was no footage from the night before, or any other night, of him coming home after he had left for work. My daughter and I both heard him, both saw him, and I touched him, but he was never home during that time. Nothing else ever happened out of the ordinary like that night, but we seriously have no idea what happened. Last year, I was off work for five months because of tumors in my throat. After surgery, I started a new job, and my first week back at work, I was cashing through a lady who had two carts full of stuff, so obviously I was helping her for a while. She had her daughter with her, who was probably 12 to 14, and was very high on the autism spectrum. She wasn't nonverbal, per se, but she apparently didn't like to talk to strangers at all, and generally preferred not to speak whatsoever. 
Her mom said that there are only three people she ever speaks to. Otherwise, she ignores everybody. So anyway, she's talking to me the whole time, telling me about the balloon she's getting and how she likes going to stores, which had her mom so happy and surprised she was trying not to cry. The girl was talking to me the entire time, and I was honored. Then, suddenly the girl asks, so how's your throat feeling? Her mom looks at her and says, that's such an odd question to ask someone. Why are you asking her that? The mom laughs and the girl asks me again. I told her it's feeling pretty good and I asked how hers is. She said, mine's good too, but I was worried about you. It was so weird and her mom's like, sorry, I don't know why she's being so odd. I told her, no, it's okay. It's just super ironic because I just had surgery on my throat in April. The girl goes, yeah, I know. That's why I asked. The mom freaked out, thinking her daughter must be sensitive or have a connection to the world that we can't understand. I have no idea what it was, if it was a glitch or an encounter with someone who was psychic, but it was really strange and kind of beautiful. I wondered if maybe she knew me in another dimension, or maybe she's just in tune with another dimension. Maybe time is more fluid to her and she can know these things? Maybe another me met her before my surgery. Maybe it was just coincidence, though. Who knows? But it was interesting, nonetheless. I never really thought of this as a glitch until recently, but either way, it's one of my most vivid memories. One time, my family and I were staying in this motel on the side of the highway because we were driving up to Northern California on a road trip. It was like a one night stay and in the morning we were supposed to leave. My mom couldn't find her wedding ring. We looked everywhere. We turned that place inside out and our checkout was in like four hours, so we were desperately searching for this ring. I started praying and basically asking for a sign of where it could be because my mom was devastated. Suddenly, it was so weird. It was like the entire world disappeared and in my head, all I could see was this suitcase. I looked at it and I just knew instantly that it was in the suitcase. I opened it up and my parents were yelling at me because I was throwing all of our neatly folded clothes out, but there it was, the ring. My parents were like, how the hell did you know it was there? At the time, I thought maybe it was God, and who knows, I mean, I did pray after all. But the experience of finding it felt almost telepathic. The best way to describe it was like tunnel vision, and we still don't know how it ended up there. My mom chalked it up to accidentally falling off when she was getting clothes for the shower, but how would I have known that? It was truly bizarre. The certainty, the absolute certainty that I felt in that moment. It was like nothing I've ever experienced. Glitch or not, it's still one of my most vivid memories. This is something my grandma told me. It was summer in the late 70s. My grandpa was stationed in California while my grandma, mom, and uncle were living in Oklahoma. My grandma and great grandpa decided to take a trip with the kids to visit my grandpa in California. They made it there safely and had a really good time while they were there. The morning they left, my great grandpa called my great grandma back in Oklahoma to let her know they were about to hit the road. It was about a three-day drive, taking the scenic route and stopping to sleep at rest stops. It was a normal trip, my mom and her younger brother playing in the back seat. They had made it to New Mexico and were only about eight hours away from home, when they were suddenly hit by a freak blizzard. They could barely see where they were going, so they were driving slowly and looking for somewhere safe to pull over and wait out the storm. They saw a bunch of lights on the road coming toward them, 
and assuming it was emergency vehicles, they pulled over to the side of the road to let them pass. The next thing they know, an officer tapped on their window, waking them all up and asking them to move along. They were confused, but just kind of brushed it off, thinking maybe they had just decided to sleep where they were rather than continue driving through the blizzard. Except, when they started to look around, there was no snow. There was no sign whatsoever of any storm. They stopped at a gas station, and my grandma said something to the attendant about the storm. He didn't say anything, but looked at her like she was nuts. They got back on the road and were home that evening. When they got home, my great-grandma was in a full panic, asking them what the hell happened to them. Apparently, it had been 10 days since my great-grandpa called to say they were heading home. They all have an entire week of their life missing, and they have no idea what happened to them or where they were during that week. It's currently 12.03 a.m. and I'm still processing what happened today. I was home with just my nephew, who was taking a shower, so nobody could have opened the door. A little backstory. My dog Ziggy and I were outside so he could take care of business. When he was done, we came back in. As we're coming inside, my nephew is pulling up. He comes in and gets in the shower. I come into my bedroom, leaving Ziggy in the living room, I walk up to my bedroom window, and I see Ziggy running from the china berry tree in the yard to the corner of the house. Instantly tripping, I run from the bedroom to the front door, which is right by my bedroom. I open the door and call for him. As I'm calling his name, my nephew opens the bathroom door. He's right here, he says. Now when I tell you my mind was warped, I mean it was gone. I stood there for five minutes, staring. I didn't know what to think. He was literally just running in the yard two seconds ago. How the hell did that happen? I was so confused. Has this happened to anybody else? Last night, I went to pick up my dog from my dad's house, and something really weird happened. It was around 10 p.m., and I picked up my dog. I've driven from my dad's house at night a thousand times, and I know the road back like the back of my hand. He lives on a ranch, and to get back to the freeway, you have to turn left when the road forks. So I'm driving to the end of this road, but the fork never comes. I keep driving on and on and on, but the road isn't ending. After a good 10 minutes, and note that this road is rather short and should have only taken me about 2 minutes, the road finally forks. I make a left, and on the side of the road I see glowing eyes, like cat eyes. Then the road just ends into a big ditch. This road should have led to the freeway. I turned around and started driving back, when all of a sudden, a dog jumps on the side of my car. This thing is growling and snarling at the window. This is gonna sound lame, but it's the truth. I got chills and a really bad feeling of dread, and I'm like 90% sure that that was not a dog. I slowed down, panicking, because I thought I was going to accidentally hit this dog. I love dogs, even demonic ones, but then it just disappears. I looked around the car with my flashlight, and this thing was just gone. I floored it out of there and turned back onto what I thought was the main road, and kept driving. I got the GPS to navigate back to my house, and it said that I was a little less than 10 miles away from the freeway. This is literally impossible, because the road that my dad lives on is not that long nor does it lead to any other road that long. I was so panicked that I floored it home, and I forgot to expand the map to see where the heck I was. 
Once I got home and calmed down, I went on Google Earth to try to see where I went, and it doesn't exist. There's not a single road that long, nor anything that resembles what I saw anywhere in that area. I have no clue what happened, and my friend and I are convinced that I traveled into an alternate universe for a little bit last night, that the cat that turned into the dog was a skinwalker. Whatever else, we don't really know. I'm not sure if this is a numerical glitch or just an uncanny coincidence. This story isn't anywhere near as interesting or eerie as some of the stuff I've seen and heard. It might be one of those guess-you-had-to-be-there stories. But this rather strange thing happened to me and I strongly feel like it was either a glitch or a synchronicity of some sort, and I've always wanted to tell this story. When I was in my early teens, I always liked the numbers 2549. They were just my favorite numbers, specifically those four, specifically in that order. I don't know why, but I always felt like they rolled off the tongue, and being a dumbass kid, I'd go around saying 2549, 2549. If I needed a password for something, it was 2549. When my parents let me choose their lottery numbers, it was 2549. My brother would always tell me to shut up and that nobody cared about my favorite numbers and that they weren't cool or significant in any way. I knew that. I just liked them. Fast forward to me turning 14. I got my first cell phone. My parents were very strict. I never had a phone as a child. Anyway, I'm really bad with technology. So I asked my tech-savvy brother to help me with setting it up and with SIM activation and whatnot. A few minutes after fiddling around, he looks at me in disbelief. He goes, Lainey, have you seen your cell phone number? I hadn't even looked at it, let alone tried to memorize it. So I was like, no, why do you ask? He was like, come over here and have a look. I swear that the last four digits of my cell phone number were 2549, in that order. My favorite four numbers, in the correct order, just happened to be the last four digits of my first cell phone number, a randomly generated number that nobody had picked. My brother's the only one who understands the strangeness of it, because he had heard me harp on about those numbers our entire childhood. We both just stared at it and then laughed at how coincidental it all was. To this day, my phone number is still the same, and I always chuckle to myself when I give people my number because I still enjoy saying the numbers out loud, just as I did when I was a kid. Life is weird. My mother is the sweetest woman. Sometimes she slips money into my wallet for things even though at this point in my life I don't really need it, thankfully. I recently used my PayPal account to order and ship something for her, because she had forgotten the password to her own account. It cost about $20, and I never thought about it again. She, not surprisingly, left a $20 bill on my kitchen counter a week or so later. I found it after she left, stuck it in my purse, and then went to sleep. I randomly remembered it a couple of days later, and I sent her a quick text message while she was at work that said, Oh, I did find that $20 you left. Thank you. That's all it said. She sent me a message about an hour later that said, That was the cutest picture of you, but now I can't find it. I asked which photo, because of course all I had sent was the text. No photo. She said she was busy at work, but on the screen, she saw the small unread text and a photo, so she quickly opened it to see the full photo of me. She showed it to her coworker, so she's not the only one who saw this. She described the photo. She said I was holding a $20 bill right under my face and cheesing hard. She described my shirt and my hairstyle. Here's the thing. She described exactly how I was dressed and exactly 
how I had done my hair that day, but I am a million percent sure that I never took a photo, nor did I send her one. Just a thank you text. She was trying to figure out how I could delete the photo after sending it to her phone. If that is possible, I certainly am not capable of doing it, nor would I. All I can think is that there was some kind of glitch. This isn't the first time I've experienced a glitch, but it is the first in a long time, and I just thought I would share. Some crazy things have been happening. It appears that I can communicate with myself from other parallel dimensions. Maybe there's even a glitch in the matrix going on. I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out. I have been having a really hard time remembering stuff, and it appears I have memories that aren't mine. Like they never happened to me, or sometimes memories that are mine, but with one thing slightly changed. And no, I don't have any diagnosed mental illnesses, and there's nothing else going on in my life or health that would explain this. Sometimes I'll lose my keys or some shirts or just stuff in general because I misplace them. However, I'm also a very organized person. I put every single thing in a specific spot so I know where things are. I live alone so nobody else has access to my stuff. At first, my stuff would move around like I would find keys on my backpack, even though I never, ever put my keys on my backpack. I always keep them on my lanyard, along with my college student ID and my purse. For example, one day I could not find my keys. Like I said, they're usually on my student lanyard. A couple of hours passed and I had a memory of me coming home in a Honda from the gas station and placing them inside the front pocket of my backpack. Sure enough, I checked and the keys were inside my backpack in the front pocket. The only problem is, in that front pocket is where I usually keep my gum. Also, I don't drive, I barely have my permit, and I don't even own a Honda. So whose memory was that, and why were the keys there? At first I thought I was going crazy, but then it kept happening. I put it to the test. I specifically wrote down where I put some things. I made a list. The same thing kept happening, at least once every two months. It was rare, but it did happen. One time my mom called me and told me she lost her passport, and I suddenly had a memory of me putting it in a specific drawer in her room on Valentine's Day. Only problem is, I hadn't seen my mom in the past eight months, and I spent Valentine's Day with my boyfriend in San Diego. She was recently married and moved into a new house that I've never been to, and I've never seen that drawer before. Regardless, that's where it was. So once again, whose memories am I having? And why does it allow me to find stuff? The only theory that I have is that this is some sort of Mandela effect or parallel realities clashing. Please let me know if anything similar has ever happened to you. For context, I'm only 20, I have good mental health, I'm not predisposed to any mental or intellectual illnesses, I live by myself in a good area, and I'm just a normal human being. So if anyone has any theories or leads on what I should research, let me know. I was 18 and living in a big house in a small village with my mom. We had a large garden with a designated area for our eight rabbits. Every evening, we would take turns to go out to feed the animals before it got dark. However, this particular evening, we had arrived home so late that it was already darker than usual. We agreed to feed the rabbits together because it can be quite creepy out in the garden alone at night. I went to the bathroom and told my mom that I would meet her out there in a minute. When I was done, I went straight to the garden where I heard my mom call, Jess, as she heard the door close behind me. I answered, yes, and I saw her upper body pop up from behind the trampoline to make sure it was me. There were no lights outside. 
However, the combination of the moon, stars, and distant low light of the motorway was enough to illuminate the area to be able to see quite clearly. I was only around 10 meters from her, so I could see her face and her very distinct big curly blonde hair. She said, okay, and bent back down behind the trampoline to continue feeding the rabbits. I looked down at the grass as I made my way to the bottom of the garden, so as not to step in any holes dug out by the rabbits during their runaround time. As I made my way down, I spoke to her about how naughty one of the rabbits was acting that day. It took me no longer than seven seconds to get to the rabbit area. As I approached behind the trampoline where the rabbit's hutches were, I looked up and expected to see my mom standing there, as I had just seen and spoken to her a few moments before. She wasn't there. I looked around for a few seconds, thinking she might be hiding in order to give me a playful scare, when, to my horror, I heard the back door of the house close. I looked up quickly and saw my mom walking out into the garden. I immediately speed walked up that garden toward her so fast with total terror in my eyes. She asked me what was the matter, and I just said, I'm never going down there again. I just saw you and spoke to you, and by the time I got down there, you were gone. Then you walked out the door. She looked at me wide-eyed and assured me that she had been in the kitchen getting her shoes on the entire time. She's not skeptical at all about these kinds of things, and from the look on my face, she could tell that I had experienced quite a scare, so she believed me straight away. We were both quite nervous about going back down there. However, the rabbits needed feeding, so we had a nervous laugh and cautiously went down to feed the rabbits together. We had a look around, and there was nothing there. I don't know who or what I spoke to in my garden. Maybe it was a glitch in the matrix, and my mom from another timeline appeared to feed my rabbits. Or, perhaps some darker forces were at work that night. I've read a little bit about doppelgangers and how some people recognize them as warnings of death. I don't know if it's related, but not long after this incident, half the rabbits dropped dead within a few days of each other. I still can't explain what happened. My boyfriend and I have a tradition where we'll meet at Sheets and get curly fries and milkshakes together and then sit in the car and listen to music. His workplace is only about a minute to drive from the Sheets that we go to, so we meet there after his shifts, typically. We decided to meet up last night, just like usual. It was just after 8pm when I pulled into the parking lot. I saw his car and parked in the spot right next to him, fully expecting to look at him through the window and see him laughing at my bad parking. I turned and looked at him through the window, and we locked eyes for a moment, until I watched him back out of his spot and drive to the exit of the parking lot. I watched him stop at the stop sign and then drive away on the route he always takes to go home. I sat there extremely confused. I checked my phone for a text in case maybe something had come up and he needed to go home, but I had no messages from him. I started to panic a little wondering if I had done something wrong and he was upset with me, but even then he's not the type to just leave like that. I sat in my car for a few minutes before deciding to text him. All I sent was, um, before he replied, I'm here. I was even more confused. I know I had seen him leave. I saw him in his car, wearing the purple shirt and hat he'd been wearing all day, and I saw his license plate. It's a four-letter word, so it's easy to memorize. I know that I had seen him. I watched him leave the area and start going home. So there was no way he could have pulled back into the parking lot without me seeing. He told me to meet him inside, and sure enough, there he was at the door, heading into the building. I was pretty startled, and I still am, because I know for a fact that I watched him look at me through the window and then leave. I told him what happened, and we both just laughed it off, but I can't help but feeling weird about it. I can't imagine how somebody else could look exactly like my boyfriend, and have the same car, and the same work outfit, and the same license plate. I don't know what happened, and I'm not sure if I hallucinated or something, but I'm pretty sure I experienced a glitch in the Matrix.
This happened a few weeks ago, but I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. I went for a late night drive, I'm talking 3 a.m., and I was driving alone down this empty road that leads outside of my city. It's a pretty small road, two lanes, and it has zero street lights. I have no lights on inside of the car, and I dimmed my dashboard lights to their lowest setting. I did have my high beams on, because of the lack of street lights. As I'm driving along, I see headlights approaching me. So, to be a courteous driver, I switch off my high beams back to the normal setting. I'm bringing this detail up because after telling several friends this story, they all claim that it was some kind of reflection. However, when I changed my headlights, the approaching lights did not dim. The headlights ahead of me turned right onto a small road leading into a development under construction. Five seconds later, I drive past the turnoff, and the car is completely gone. There are no cars parked on the street. Nothing. It instantly caught my attention that this car had just vanished. I whipped my car around, and I went into the development that the car had turned into. I drive down to the end of the development, and it's a complete dead end. No other cars are parked in the development. Nothing. This car just vanished. I've driven the road several times since to see if there was a possibility of a reflection or anything, but I cannot replicate it. The car straight up disappeared. This happened when I was 20, and I'm 22 now. My mom and dad are separated, and my mom lives a state away from my dad and I. Around Christmas time, she was going to be passing through our state visiting family, so we decided to meet at a local cafe and spend the day together. We went to dinner, spent some time at the mall, and had a pretty good time. Her husband took some pictures of us since we rarely got together. My mom sent me the digital photos just after, and some weeks after that, she sent a letter with a physical copy of one of the pictures. It was a small photograph, so I decided to slip it into the corner of my mirror to display it. I believe I recall snapping a picture of said photo in the mirror to send to my mom so I could show her how I had displayed it, but I didn't like how it turned out. This is where things get more muddled and weird. My dad had recently gotten engaged to his girlfriend and were in the arduous process of buying a house together. My dad managed a small store that seldom got many walk-ins, so he'd been filling out paperwork on the clock. When he'd finished, he snapped a picture of a signed document and sent it to his fiancée so she could see. She replied, Why'd you send me a picture of Seth and his mom? My dad was confused. On his screen, it showed the picture he took of the document embedded in his message, but when he asked her to send it back, what she'd received, lo and behold, was a picture of my mom and I sitting together. My dad told me about it when he got back from work and showed me the pictures and messages. He told me he'd gone through all of his phone and that picture was nowhere to be found. I was confused, but inclined to believe nothing happened. At least nothing that couldn't be logically explained. Maybe when my mom had sent me the digital pictures, I had texted that one to my dad for whatever reason. I went through our message history and there was nothing though. Maybe I had sent it to his fiance, but no dice. Perplexed, I asked to see the picture again, and I noticed something. It wasn't the digital picture. In the bottom corner of the image, you could see a wooden frame. I went to my room and confirmed it. It was the frame of my mirror. I was freaked out, but determined. Like I said, I thought I remembered trying to take pictures of it sitting in the mirror. I looked through all my photos and those I had recently deleted, but it wasn't there. If I had taken it and deleted it, I worked out the time to find that it would have just expired and been permanently wiped from my phone. Maybe I was mistaken on whether or not I had chosen to send it to my mom, so I checked our messages as well. Nothing. I was genuinely perplexed and went back to my dad with my findings. He pointed out that even if I had found the same image on my phone, 
it wouldn't explain how it made its way into a conversation between him and his fiance. It was just unreasonably bizarre. I turned to Google as a last ditch effort to find some evidence that I wasn't alone in this phenomenon, that perhaps it had happened to someone else and they'd found a worthwhile explanation. I found posts about cloud users winding up with strangers' photos on their phone due to some faulty photo sharing settings, but nothing similar or applicable to my situation. I hadn't enabled any kind of photo sharing options and my dad didn't even have an iPhone. The only thing that linked our phones together was us sharing the same Wi-Fi, and that was a loose link at that. I could never rationalize what happened. His fiancée ended up showing me her phone, too, to confirm that her message feed looked different from my dad's, and she had no trace of the photo already in her library. At this point, I wasn't even surprised. The two of them seemed to quickly forget about the odd ordeal, and my mom more or less brushed it off when I shared the story with her. I was left with my own troubled thoughts about what this implied, about the level of control and privacy we really have if a photo utterly erased from existence in all capacity can somehow resurface in an unrelated format with no tangible source. To me, this was not so much a glitch in our physical matrix, but a glitch in a more real and less tangible one. Needless to say, I've largely pushed this event from my mind. The paranoia does no good, and I just have to accept that it's beyond my understanding and my control. But if anyone out there has a greater understanding of networks and data in the technological world, maybe you can take this as more palatable food for thought. But from my perspective, Lord knows I've bit off more than I can chew. All I'm left thinking is, what else has the potential to show up where it doesn't belong? I've never thought about glitches in the Matrix as a serious thing, until I started reading more about them. All this time, I've blamed my weird experiences on ghosts. Though I've never seen one, I still believe in them, since my experiences are, at least to me, still unexplainable. I moved into my current house six years ago. It's almost a hundred years old, in the oldest neighborhood in my very large city. Weird things would happen, but we would just shrug it off. You know, lights flickering when we would tease each other about ghosts, things falling off the shelves and out of the cabinets, things going missing and then reappearing in weird places, or by weird means. And then, these three events happened. 1. Our living room TV remote disappeared for two years. Then, one afternoon, I was sitting on the couch, picking up little play balls and throwing them to my toddler. I went to pick up another ball, and right in the middle of the ball pile was the remote. It wasn't there when I made the ball pile. I still thought that maybe somehow the toddler had put it there, but I really don't think so. Number two. I used our garden hose, which has a very specific cap on it. I was done with the hose, wound it back up, turned it on to wash my hands off, turned it off, capped it, and walked away. As I was walking away, my roommate walked to the hose and immediately asked where the cap was. I turned, walked the several feet back to the hose, and sure enough, that cap was gone. Not on the ground not in the bushes, nowhere. I still just thought that maybe somehow it got lost, but that doesn't make a bit of sense. I had just put that cap back on a few seconds before, and nobody else had walked up in that amount of time. Last, but definitely not least, the weirdest incident that actually made me believe it was a ghost was this. I was sitting on one side of the couch, and my roommate was on the other side. He started the movie that we were going to watch. I had an ashtray and a lighter sitting next to me. I put everything down right where it was supposed to go and then leaned the lighter onto the ashtray. A few minutes later, I went to get it again, but the lighter was gone. I figured maybe it slipped between the couch cushions or went somewhere else, but nope. 
We took all the cushions off, and it wasn't there. My roommate picked the entire couch up, and nothing was underneath it. The lighter just vanished. I ended up having to use a book of matches. After the movie, I went to bed, but I left everything else, minus the lighter, on the couch. I woke up the next morning, but where I had left my matches was my lighter, laying right in its spot. At first, I was like, let's be reasonable here, and called my roommate. He said that he didn't find or see the lighter, but he remembers the matches because he used one in the morning before he left for work and put them right next to the ashtray. Ever since then, I was convinced that there was a ghost in my house, but maybe these are glitches in the matrix. What do you think? There have been a few notable events in my life that are illogical head scratchers. They never really felt creepy to me, more like harmless pranks by the universe. One of them happened a few years ago, in summer. My cat caught an oddly huge black bird, almost like a raven, and tore into the dead bird in our garden, right next to our terrace. I think this was the first time he ever caught a bird, let alone one that big. There were feathers and blood and entrails everywhere. I didn't know what to do with the fresh carcass, but I knew I couldn't let my cat finish eating it. Especially because he would throw up everywhere in the house later. So I shooed him off, grabbed an empty ceramic plant pot from the terrace, and placed it upside down over the bird in the grass. To make sure the cat didn't topple it over to get his prey, I placed a stack of four to six bricks on top of the plant pot. I then called my mom and asked her to dispose of the body once she'd come home from work, because I didn't think I could handle it without throwing up. I took the cat inside for the rest of the afternoon, and actually bathed him, because his paws and mouth were bloody too. My mom came home and I showed her into the garden. The pot was as I had left it, with the bricks neatly stacked on top. My mom braced for the worst, took them off, and turned the pot no bird. Not only no bird, no intestines, no blood, no feathers. The grass was pristine. I was dumbfounded, and my mom thought this was a super lame prank. No, I was not intoxicated. No, we don't have gas in the house. No, I was not on any medication. And no, I didn't sleep and dream it up. Later that evening, I went down the stone path that connects our garden with our house for the umpteenth time that day. I stopped in my tracks, completely startled, because in the middle of the stone path was the massacred bird. Definitely the same odd, huge black bird. Entrails out and everything, now full of flies and the blood around it dry since it had been baking in the sun all afternoon. I was like, what the hell? and called my mom over, who finally believed me at least that the bird actually existed. How that bird got from under the weighed down pot in the garden onto the path that we'd been walking on all day without us noticing it, while the pot and bricks remained perfectly in place, and why the grass under it was so pristine, I honestly don't know. For some reason, I didn't get a creepy or hostile feeling, but it was a funny head scratcher that in the end, did seem like the cosmos was either glitching out or playing a prank on me. So this just happened and I have an eerie and weird feeling that something is just not right. So first, let me explain the placement of my house. When you come in, there's a little hall, and in front of you, the bathroom. Then you go to the left and you have a small kitchen, and then a door. Then it's my bedroom, but it's so big I turned it into a living room. And right next to my bedroom is my daughter's bedroom. Everything is in an L shape. I'm 24 years old, and I live alone with my daughter, who's two years old, and our two pet bunnies. 
I had lunch with my daughter and it started getting cold and dark, so we went into my bedroom and closed the door to the kitchen. She always plays in my bedroom and her bedroom, which are directly connected. I was reading some Reddit stories while listening to her making her usual noises, talking to herself, singing, asking me questions, moving toys around, the basic children noises. Suddenly, in a moment, the house goes completely silent. After a few seconds, I think maybe she's being mischievous and doing something she isn't supposed to do like all kids do. So, I go and check on her, since I couldn't see her from where I was laying. Let me make it clear that there is no way for her to go outside without opening the creaky door to the kitchen, which is right in front of me, and she never tried to do it since the lights in the kitchen were off and she's terrified of the dark. So I look everywhere in her bedroom and start calling her name. Nothing. I check in her closet nothing. Under her bed, in her little play tent, in her toy chest, under my bed, the sofa, the desk, everywhere. Nothing. She's nowhere to be seen. Let's mention she's never tried to hide or anything like that. And she comes when she's called, which she didn't, so I started to freak out. I knew that I didn't hear her leave my bedroom to the kitchen, but I checked anyway. Nothing. The bathroom. Empty. Now I'm really starting to panic. I go inside again. I check everything over. And while I'm in her bedroom, I hear her crying from outside. I look through my daughter's window to see her outside laying on the ground wearing only a t-shirt and not the t-shirt that she was previously wearing. One of the t-shirts that she does have, but a different one. I ran outside almost falling over but when I opened the door, silence. She wasn't there. There was no crying. There was nothing. I go outside and check everything, and I can't find her or any trace of her having been there. Defeated, I go back upstairs, ready to call 911. When I go to my bedroom, I see her calmly playing with some blocks in her bedroom. She was wearing the clothes she had been before, as though she had never disappeared. The t-shirt I had seen her wearing outside was in her wardrobe, neatly folded. I'm still in shock, still sitting here just staring at my daughter, feeling that if I blink, she might disappear again. I don't know if it was a glitch or what, but it terrified me, and I have no idea what to think. The women in my family know things that we couldn't possibly know. Sometimes we know things that are literally impossible for us to know. The main three are me, my daughter, and my mom. It's not like a psychic thing. We can't control it. In my experience, it's like taking a test you studied really hard for, so you're very confident in your answer. My mom's thing is safety. She always knows when somebody is in danger or is going to get hurt, or is going to need help. She has called me as something was happening before to ask me if the exact thing that was happening had happened. My thing is people. I'm never wrong about people. And my daughter's thing is pregnancy. She can always tell when someone is pregnant. Here's an example from my mom. My parents got married at 19. I was born a year later. When they were 22, my mom was pregnant with my baby brother, and my dad wanted to go to a concert. My mom said she didn't want him to, because he was going to get hurt. My dad told her he'd be fine. She was probably just anxious because of me and being pregnant with my brother, and anyway, he wouldn't be out too late. Now at that age, my dad had a hot temper and a spotless driving record. She should have been worried about him getting in a fight or something, but no. She said she just knew that he was going to get in a wreck, but he insisted that it would be fine. She finally agreed, but she made him promise to wear his seatbelt. He did. On his way home from the concert, 
There was a long, empty, boring stretch of road. He was alone. He fell asleep going 70 miles per hour and wrecked into a tree. If he hadn't been wearing his seatbelt, which he often didn't, he would have died. My mom basically saved his life that night. My example, my sister became friends with this girl and before I even met her, I didn't like her. My sister said that she was fun and happy and bubbly. She got mad at me because I said, look, she's going to overwhelm you really fast. And then when you tell her that you need a break, she's going to threaten to harm herself. She told me that that was ridiculous, that I was assuming things. I said, I'm not assuming, I'm telling you. I know that's what's going to happen. She said, I was just jealous. Sure enough, two months later, my sister calls me absolutely losing it. She said, dude, how did you know that? How did you know that she would do that? She told this girl she needed some space. And the girl said, well, I'm just going to off myself then. No one wants to be around me. She didn't, and my sister no longer hangs out with her. But my sister was really freaked out that I knew that. Finally, my daughter's example. I had a friend come over. She announced her pregnancy. My daughter was three years old. We congratulated her and hung out and talked for a while. When they left, my daughter said, Mama, why did Miss Taylor say that she's pregnant? Thinking she was wondering what pregnant meant, I said, Oh, because she has a baby in her belly. My daughter looked me dead in the eyes and said, No, Mama, she doesn't. The baby died. A few days later, my friend called me to tell me she had a miscarriage. Another friend came over to hang out. My daughter was four at this time. And my daughter said, What are you going to name your baby? This woman had been trying to have a baby for about three years at this point with no luck. She said, I'm not having a baby. My daughter said, Oh, yes, you are. There's a baby in your belly. She found out she was pregnant two weeks later. I don't know if this is some kind of glitch, like we have interdimensional knowledge or what, but it doesn't feel like a psychic thing. Like I said before, it's almost like we've studied for this or we know because we've been there. It's really hard to explain, but either way, it's definitely kind of strange and trippy. What do you think? For the past year or so, I have been noticing that things around me don't seem normal anymore. I continue to have this overwhelming sense that everything is fake in a way, or almost dreamlike. I've even kicked around the idea that I may have died already and I'm in some sort of purgatory. I recently took my family on a weekend getaway to Seattle. Being a couple hundred miles away from our home in Sela, Washington, it's an easy trip for my wife and I to manage with our two kids, 11 years old and four months old. Over the course of our weekend excursion, I experienced a few things that I found to be odd and left me feeling a bit uneasy. The first occurrence was trivial enough, but it sort of set the tone for the eeriness of the weekend. I was gazing out of the window of our hotel room on the 12th floor, sipping a cup of coffee, when I noticed a plastic bag drifting in the wind. I watched the bag dance around in the air as it slowly descended. A green dumpster 12 stories below me caught my eye, and I immediately thought, what if that bag floated all the way down there and landed in the dumpster? I stood at the window for five minutes or so, watching this bag slowly float toward the ground, gliding left, right, back and forth. The more I watched the bag, the more confident I became that it would find its way into this dumpster. And it did. This bag that I noticed off in the distance drifted 12 stories and perfectly navigated its way into the dumpster below my building. Later that day, I was in the hotel lobby, approaching the elevator to head up to my room. 
In front of me, there was a man with two children, waiting for the elevator as well. The man had a guitar case strapped to his back, along with an amplifier and various other bags. His back was to me, and he had a hoodie on. For some reason, I thought to myself, what if that's Ed? Ed was a friend of mine that I hadn't seen in years. We used to work at an olive garden together in our younger days. We also played guitar together and did a fair amount of partying. Now here's the weird part. My wife thinks I'm crazy, but bear with me. The weird part was how confident I was that this guy was going to turn around and it would be Ed. The same confidence, almost certainty I would say, that I had had in the fact that the trash bag would fly into the dumpster. The elevator doors opened and this man and his two children walked inside. As the man turned around to enter the floor number on the elevator button console, it was Ed. We were both thrilled to see each other, and we even held the door open to chat for a moment, hindering other folks in the process. Even as this was all occurring though, I couldn't shake the feeling, this isn't real. It's a very difficult thing to describe, but things just don't feel real. Later that evening, my 11-year-old son and I were on the balcony outside of our hotel room. He was peering over the edge when he suddenly whimpered under his breath, that poor guy. When I asked him who and what he was talking about, he said, that bumblebee on the ground next to the dumpster, he's dead. We were on the 12th floor, like I mentioned earlier. There's no way that this kid could see a dead bumblebee on the ground floor. Not to mention that the alleged bee was laying next to the dumpster that was the manifested landing zone for the floating trash bag. We argued a bit over whether or not he could really see this bee when he finally convinced me to go down and take a look. As we made our way down to the street level, my thought process shifted. The same confidence that I had previously had regarding the trash bag and Ed had returned. Although I didn't mention it to my son, I became increasingly certain that the bee would be there. And well, it was. It was right there, right next to the green dumpster containing the trash sack. The next evening, I took the family to a place called Gameworks, which is similar to Dave and Buster's or an adult version of Chuck E. Cheese. I placed our car keys, wallets, and other important things all into our diaper bag and backpack that we carried on into the establishment. We spent a couple of hours playing games before finally counting our tickets and claiming prizes at the prize booth. We pocketed the prizes and went down the block to the Cheesecake Factory for dinner. After being seated for a few moments, my wife realizes that I don't have the backpack on. The backpack containing all of our money, credit cards, car keys, not to mention food and supplies for our four-month-old baby. The bizarre thing is that I have no recollection of ever taking that bag off, but apparently I did because it was gone. But I could have sworn up and down that I never took it off. I immediately go into panic mode, leap up from the table, and take off toward the GameWorks establishment. I run inside and dart around frantically for about a minute or two, with the bag nowhere in sight. Finally, I calm down and focus. After breathing and focusing for a moment, I'm greeted with that same confidence that I mentioned before. I was confident that I would not leave that place without my bag. At that moment, a man approached me waving his arms in the air and calling me by my first name. He said, here, Cody, I've got your bag, man. Now get back to that cheesecake factory and enjoy your dinner. I was awestruck and definitely beside myself at that moment. I had no clue who this man was or how he knew my name or where I was eating dinner. I didn't even think to question him. I just reached out, grabbed the bag and left. This might seem coincidental to a lot of you, but these are just recent examples of how my life seems to unfold lately. Either I'm a walking conduit of coincidence or something larger is at play. My wife thinks I'm nuts, but things are definitely not the same as they used to be. I don't know exactly how or why, but 
they just aren't. Things just don't seem real. And I can't tell you why. I had a dream about visiting my aunt-in-law's condo that was in Egypt when I was 25 years old. Now I am 29. In the dream, I was sitting on a white couch inside this nice condo, which you might as well call a huge apartment in America. At the time, I didn't even know that I was in Egypt. All I knew was that when you walked onto the porch, there was a desert in a huge city. I started walking around the condo and noticed a huge hole in one of the walls where you can see the elevator moving up and down. This somewhat freaked me out, but I started moving around the place. I looked around the floor. It had a pink marble floor, three bedrooms, a small kitchen, and a small wood floor over by the kitchen where the hole in the wall was. I woke up and started thinking how weird that dream was. Five years later, I find myself in Egypt meeting my girlfriend's family, who's now my wife. The main reason I was there was because of a wedding, and we had other things to do for the wedding there as well. At least, that was the main reason for us being there. I was also there, as I said, to meet the rest of her family. On the last night of my being there, I walked into my aunt's place for the first time. I looked around and thought, this seems really familiar, but I didn't really know why. It came time to put my bags down and she took me to the room that I was going to sleep in. Then my wife went out to get her dress for the wedding. They left me in the condo and as I'm walking around, I started to wonder about why everything looked so familiar. I remembered my dream as I was sitting on the couch. So I start running around and looking everywhere around the place. Everything was exactly the same, minus the hole in the wall where the elevator was. During this time, my new cousin walked in, saw me running around and looking very distressed, and he asked, well, what's wrong? I said, I had a dream about your mom's house three years ago. I thought it was my Aunt T's place, but it turns out it's your mom's place. It was really weird. I don't know how I saw that place without ever having seen it in real life first. To be fair, I don't know if this is paranormal or somebody playing a prank on me, but I'd like to hear your thoughts all the same. I've lived in the same studio apartment for four years now, and along one wall is a closet with a mirrored sliding door. I've never cleaned this mirror since I never really touch it, so it doesn't have any smudges on it or anything like that. At least, I never noticed any smudges on it. Until tonight. Last night, I was cooking in my apartment with the windows closed. It was a cold night, and because of the steam from the food, it's all one room, so the kitchen is in the same room as my closet. I noticed that my mirror had gotten a bit fogged up. I didn't think anything of it at the time, but as I was walking by the mirror today, I noticed that the top part of my mirror was still a bit foggy looking, and I could see words written on the mirror as if somebody had drawn them with their finger or the eraser of a pencil since the lines are fairly thin. The printing is neat, like teacher writing. The lettering doesn't resemble the handwriting of anybody I know. I assumed that the person who had lived in the apartment before me had traced out words along the top of the mirror, and that the steam from the cooking had only just now revealed them. I was curious about what the former resident had to say, so I picked up an index card and a clipboard and started copying out what the words said. It was tough because they were faint. They only showed up when the light in the room wasn't shining directly on them, and the first part of the writing was a bit obscured. They said in all lowercase letters, being dead isn't being alive. 
I'm not really sure what to think. It seems kind of tautological. Obviously, being dead isn't being alive, right? I mean, by definition. But I'm curious about how the writing got there, and a little freaked out. In all the time I've lived here, the only person who's ever been in the house when I wasn't home is my mom, and she wouldn't do that. And even if she did, it wasn't her handwriting. Every other person who's been in the apartment has been there at the same time as me, and I think that I would have noticed somebody writing on my mirror. So I'm at a bit of a loss. Maybe the previous resident just left a spooky message to mess with me and I never saw it until now. Or maybe my little apartment is haunted. What do you think? I still don't know what happened, but I have chills. I left for work at around 9 and my husband was home with my son for the day. I went to lunch at 12.30. At 1 o'clock, I get a call from an unknown number. Usually, I ignore these calls, but something told me to answer. My five-year-old son was on the other end, crying. He said that he'd been taking a nap and when he woke up, his daddy was gone. I said, okay, I'll come over since I'm still on lunch. I thought maybe my husband went to work in the garage or take a shower or something, and that it just freaked my son out a little when he woke up. I tell him to stay on the line and that it's about a 10 minute drive for me. He doesn't say much, but I can still hear his breathing on the other end. This is where it gets freaky. I have chills even writing this part. As soon as I enter the end of my block, the phone call ends. I pull into the driveway and his car is still there. The front door is shut. My neighbor is getting groceries from his car so I say a quick greeting and head inside. My son and husband are sitting on the couch together, watching TV. My husband is playing on the cell phone. I asked him what happened and he looks at me completely confused. I tell him about the call and he acts like he doesn't believe me. I thought it was a crappy prank from him. So I asked my son, did you call mommy and say you couldn't find daddy? My son looks at me and says, no, can I have a juice box? He's too young to be that good at lying and he doesn't really lie anyway. He's usually pretty forthright, so I 100% believe him. I know my son's voice. There's no doubt in my mind that it was him. Maybe if he was younger, but at five years old, I can distinctly tell the voice. I can see how maybe it was a scammer, but how would anybody be able to mimic his voice so perfectly? I don't know how somebody could steal his voice because he doesn't like to talk on phones, and I only have a handful of recordings of him. In those recordings, his voice is high-pitched and happy. On the phone, he was crying. I feel like I'm going crazy at this point, I asked my husband if he'd ever left the room or given our son the cell phone. He says no to both. I check the call logs on that phone and there's nothing. We don't have any other phones of any type in the house. I still don't know what happened, but I'm beyond creeped out. I've always had a feeling that something is in our house since the first year we moved in. It's now been 13 years. I've grown up with this belief. As a kid, I always saw a black figure in a cowboy hat, or just a regular black figure, standing or walking in the hallway outside my room. I haven't seen that figure in a long time, but I do get the uneasy feeling of being watched at times. A lot of times, actually, but continuing on with the story. About a year ago is when I first heard a voice that did not belong to anybody in my family. I was home alone at the time, and I was in the kitchen doing dishes. Our kitchen faces our front yard and has a huge bay window. 
I'm a singer, so I was singing while doing the dishes like I normally do. And in my ear, I clearly heard a deep male voice singing a part with me. I was home alone at the time, and afterward I checked every room to make 100% sure that I was alone. And I definitely was. I stopped singing and finished the dishes and went to sit with my cats in the living room. I watched TV, but the house had such an uneasy feeling. It was definitely not pleasant. That happened maybe less than a year ago. A few months ago, everyone was home and my mom called me into the living room to ask if I had been calling her. I told her that I hadn't and that I was just doing some things in my room, either watching YouTube or cleaning up or something, I don't remember what it was. Anyway, she told me that she could have sworn she heard me calling her. Again, I told her that I hadn't been. I brushed it off as it could have just been my brother and she thought it was me. A few days ago, my brother came to us from doing laundry in the basement and asked us if we were talking or calling him. We hadn't called him or said his name, so we said no. My mom has also told me that she heard my dad call her while he wasn't even in the house, when his car wasn't even in the driveway. Over the weekend, I came home from work at about 5 a.m. I work overnights at a restaurant and I don't usually get home until this time, and I usually start at 6 p.m. I came home and the next morning my parents told me that they distinctly heard my voice and they were sure that it was mine, talking to them from upstairs. They thought that I had gotten home early, but I wasn't home until 5 a.m. Then on Sunday I was down in the basement changing the air filter, which was already giving me this feeling of not being alone or being watched. I come upstairs and my dad asked if I had called him or was talking to him. I said that I hadn't been, because I wasn't, and even if I was, nobody can really hear you from the basement unless you scream. He told me he was positive that someone had said, Mike, what the hell are you doing? And he was positive that it was my voice. I know that something is in this house. I have known it ever since I was a kid, but it's never spoken like that before. It scared me a lot when I was younger. But I'm 20 now, and even though I've gotten braver, I feel like it's learned new weaknesses and is definitely more active on bad days or in rough times. Anyone have any ideas on what this thing could be? I live in Brampton, Ontario, if that helps. A lot of this town used to be a huge graveyard, and there are cemeteries everywhere. If you know what this could be, let me know. I don't identify as a medium, I'm just very sensitive to energy. I pick up on spirits because I can sense them, like I sense the energy of people, animals, and places. Needless to say, I'm an exhausted empath, and have picked up some unfriendly Caspers along the way. Last month, I was staying at my boyfriend's old house the week before we moved to a new city. Our town was very old. And, according to a friend who does identify as a medium, crawling with spirits. I don't know how old the string of apartment houses was, but it's safe to bet at around 80 plus years old. One night, I was going to bed when I felt something standing next to the bed. This happens a lot, and it's usually not very strong. And I can't tell if it's my paranoia or the real thing, so I typically ignore it. However, I had been reading about the paranormal, so I was a little bit more inclined that night to think of the supernatural. While doing so, reading, I suddenly got a flash feeling of a college-aged girl, something about navy blue and hot pink. She might have had those brown Ugg boots on. If this was a spirit, she couldn't have died that long ago based on her clothing. The emotions off her were a little intense, and I felt uncomfortable, so I tried calling on my guides and ancestors to help me not attach to this spirit, and to set up strong energy shields. 
That night, I had a dream that something from the back porch was wordlessly calling out to me, trying to get me to come to it. In the dream, it was a humid, warm summer night, instead of the frigid cold we'd been experiencing. The energy was urging me to come outside, to come see what it had to show me. I get surreal and eerie dreams all the time, but this one felt off, and I remember feeling unnerved. I didn't go outside. The next night, my boyfriend and I were laying in bed, just laughing and joking. I felt that girl's presence come around again, but I felt her notice how happy my boyfriend and I seemed to be. It almost felt like she was touched by how cute we were together. Or maybe she was just happy to find some emotion she could manipulate, I don't know. I felt her disappear. The next day, I was laying on the couch in the main room. My boyfriend had left a little while ago to sell some of his old books, and I was alone in the house. I thought I sensed that presence, but my senses are always on, and even if it were true, I really didn't want to think about it, so I kept on reading my book. All of a sudden, I felt a solid wave of energy approach me. Something was on the other side of the couch, and in all shapes and form. It felt exactly like my boyfriend. I'm quite familiar with how my boyfriend feels energetically, being close with him. And this was a horrifyingly exact replica. I felt affection and friendliness coming from it. And I heard and sensed it speak. It said, I killed myself, crashed my car. All of this was said casually and friendly not with a lot of emotion, or the right emotion, but just with his normal day-to-day -day tone. I felt it sending me love and affection, but really sending it to me, pushing up against the energy barriers that I had set up earlier. Needless to say, since I have had experience feeling people's energy, or predicting events through those flashes of sense, I freaked out. My heart was racing because, what if? What if he had crashed and this was him visiting me to say goodbye? What if this was my last chance to connect with him? I also have really bad anxiety and am kept up by thoughts like this in my worst times. In my fear and worry, I started cracking a bit. I reached out a bit to connect with this presence. I felt a huge surge of energy that I hadn't sensed before rush in, getting through my barriers and permeating my chest. The boyfriend feeling went away, as did most of my own energy and sense of groundedness. I felt the way that I had pre-shielding, anxious and ungrounded and not completely safe in my body. Safe to say, this boyfriend presence wasn't actually my boyfriend, who is sitting alive and well across from me right now at my kitchen table as I write this. My suspicions are that this spirit needed to attach to living beings for their energy. And when they saw how I cared for my boyfriend, they disguised themselves as him in order to get me to open up. I've encountered a lot of half-explained spirits, but never one who could mimic so strongly. I'm still trying to work on personal energy protection, and I hope that this thing isn't still hanging around. I don't really know how to word this so that it sounds coherent, but I'll try my best. Let me preface that I am currently staying with two other people, my mother and my older brother. It's 2.07 a.m., and this happened about an hour ago. My mom is asleep. I was in the living room, and to the left of the couch I was on is our dining room. The dining room connects to the kitchen, and in the kitchen there's a door that leads to the basement. That's where my brother's room is. Now, I only have one brother, but something was apparently mimicking him, so I'll call the mimic brother too. My brother was rolling a cigarette and turned the dining room light on. I asked him to please turn it off when he was done. He agreed and proceeded to go into the kitchen for something, and then he went outside to smoke said cigarette. At this point, 
my brother, who was really the mimic at this point, comes back inside after smoking and went into the kitchen. He didn't turn the dining room light off like I had asked, and then he asked me if I could please be quiet. He can hear when somebody walks around his room as it's directly under the living room, and then he went downstairs. So this is where I'm confused. About an hour later, my actual brother came inside. I was really confused as to who was unlocking the door, because both my mom and my brother were home. My actual brother was telling me how he had actually been out, just driving around, and then he went downstairs and asked me to be quiet. Now I'm not familiar with the mimic spirits or ones like that, so I'm not sure if I just encountered one. But it wasn't my brother who came in before my real brother. I'm just really confused. My actual brother says he remembers telling me to be quiet before he left, but that doesn't explain how he got outside without coming upstairs, because he locked the door when he left. If anybody has any idea what happened, I would be more than grateful if you shared your ideas. So, there's a place that I first investigated two years ago on Halloween. It's a bed and breakfast on the England-Wales border. It's so active paranormally that it's become a firm favorite with my friends and I. I'm going back next weekend and it will be my 10th visit in two years. During our investigations, we've experienced so much activity and so varied. I saw the full-bodied apparition of a child during the day in February. Strange bangs coming from inside wardrobes. Countless EVPs recorded. Some of a really creepy growl. Tons of poltergeist activity, object displacement, and even damage. The list is endless. I could go on and on. But one of the strangest phenomenon we've encountered is what seems to be a mimic ghost. There have been times when we've seen one of our friends only to discover that they were in a completely different place at the time. We've even spoken to friends, wondered why they haven't replied, and then looked around only to find out we were completely alone in the room. On the flip side, it seems at times that people, alive and kicking people, are completely invisible. Attempting to talk to friends has gone entirely unheard, to much frustration. Or people will have been in a room together, but some will claim that that person was never there. Has anyone else ever experienced such activity? It's so intriguing. Something strange happened to me years ago. But after all these years, the whole event still feels so paranormal. I don't know what to make of it, so I'm sharing this for any perspective or feedback. When I was nine months old, my dad drowned in a freak accident. He was helping friends loose a canoe that had gotten stuck in the river. The undertow snagged him, and nobody saw him alive again. They found him a few days later, a couple of miles down the river. 20 years later, I'm camping with my girlfriend at the time, now ex, and my best bro and his girlfriend. It's a beautiful summer night in the Pacific Northwest, and it was about 9.30 p.m., so mostly dark. My friend and I hiked a short trip to this rock overhang that had a perfect view of the river. We lit up some cigarettes, sipped on a beer, chatted, and took in the view. We're two minutes into this, and this happens. Across the riverbank, I see my dad standing there, staring at me. Obviously, I don't remember knowing him, but I do have an image in my mind of him from pictures I've seen. He looked exactly like my dad at the time that he died. I hit my friend and ask him if he's seeing this scene, but he doesn't. Then a sort of spotlight blasts my dad, and he immediately breaks the stair and walks to his left about 20 feet down the river. He goes a little ways back into the trees. Slowly, 
he starts pulling some tools and a rope out of a cache or bag. At this point, I am pale and shaking. My friend worried because I'm staring into the darkness, not responding. But what was I seeing? The whole other side of the riverbank was now a stage, lit up, and my dad was working on something with his back to me. He finally turns around, and he has a noose in his hands. He throws it over a tree branch, proceeds to slip it around his neck, says nothing, and hangs himself while staring directly at me. We had odd experiences for the rest of the night, but nothing like that. I'm now 41, and I still haven't integrated this experience. It really messed me up, and I can't help but wonder, did he really drown, or is that what I was told? Was that some kind of evil spirit just messing with me to torture me? I had had numerous close calls with Side as a young adult, but never by hanging. Was my dad telling me a hidden truth? Was that something else? A mimic? It's been a strange one. My husband has a spirit attached to him. We call it the Mimic. One time, when he was living with roommates before he met me, his roommates went on their honeymoon for two weeks, and he stayed home. He was just playing Call of Duty and lazing around when he heard his female roommate yell for him, Hey D, come look at this YouTube video I found. Then he heard her laughing. Without thinking, he went into their room, and of course, he found nobody there. In other instances, he has heard my voice speaking. I've heard my mom talking. We've both heard our former roommate cursing at his computer when he was at work. My husband's mom has heard me saying something when I wasn't even home. And it follows him from house to house. It's so creepy. So the latest instance was just recently. My husband and my mother-in-law and I all heard the same thing, but found nothing. It sounded like one of our cats meowing in the guest bathroom. But we're moving right now, so we have our cats confined to my husband and I's room. We knew immediately after talking about it that the mimic had followed us to the new house. It's not too scary, and it doesn't necessarily do anything, but it sounds like people we know. And I've also blamed it for being the reason that fresh produce spoils so quickly in our house, but I can't prove that. I don't really know why it's here, or what it wants, but it's definitely creepy. My cousin and I were young at the time. It's 2006 and we're both toddlers. We were playing PlayStation 1 on the living room floor with our backs to the kitchen and front door. No one is home besides my cousin, myself, and my dad, who is sleeping in the other room on a couch. Out of absolutely nowhere, we hear my aunt's voice, clear as day, being projected from directly behind us say, Hey boys, what are you doing? So my cousin and I turn around, expecting my mother, aunt, and other cousin to be there having returned from the mall. But there was absolutely no one there, and nothing to be heard but faint snoring from the other room. My aunt did not return to the house for several more hours. Another time, my cousin and I were at my grandmother's house for Christmas. We were sitting in a spare bedroom, watching TV, while the adults were in the other room talking at the table. We have a clear view of sight down the hallway, into my grandparents' bedroom. We hear our names being called from that direction. When we go to look, we see a shadow figure as tall as the doorframe walk past my grandparents' bedroom doorway. My cousin and I investigated the room immediately, but nobody was in there. Those are just a couple of weird experiences that we've had together, 
but this mimic, or mimics, have been following us for a while now. This isn't the first paranormal encounter I've had, but it is only the second time someone was with me when something strange and inexplicable happened. We moved into the new house we're currently living in in October of last year. I should mention the house we came from also had its share of very creepy happenings, and there's one event that I feel might be connected to what happened in the new house. I was home alone with my dog, reading on my bed. My parents at the time were remodeling their bathroom and had met with the man who would be doing the job at the home improvement store down the block to look at tiles. Now this whole encounter is quick and it happened in a matter of seconds, but even now, years later, I struggle to think about it without it upsetting me. Before I get on with it, I just want to say that I was in near silence no music was playing, no TV, my laptop was off and charging, I wasn't on my phone, no headphones. Basically, I wasn't doing anything that would have caused a noise. And seeing as I was home alone, the only source of a human voice would have been me. The only sound that could be heard was the sound of the air conditioner. So I was on my bed reading. My dog was downstairs, presumably napping since he was like 12 years old at the time. He's still kicking it and he's 17 now by the way. He has a heart condition that causes him to get tired easily. All of a sudden, I hear my mom's voice greeting the dog like she always does when she comes home. And I mean exactly the way she does, switching between English and Spanish, the same tone, everything. I stood up and stretched, but then I realized I hadn't heard the door open. So I approached the stairs and very confusedly called out to my mom. Mom? Silence. And then my dog starts screaming. I mean screaming as if he was being tortured, crying and whining all over the place. I started calling out to him, scared out of my mind. I took the first step of the stairs down and immediately froze. Something felt so very wrong and I was flushed with this primal fear. I knew without a doubt that whatever had greeted my dog was not my mom. Whatever it was, it literally froze me with fear. My dog finally came running up, zoomed right past me into my room headed into the bathroom and hid behind the toilet. Mind you, through tears and shaky hands, I did call my mom. I practically blew her phone up, but all I got was voicemail. That was the first time something like that had happened to me, and I knew I couldn't just explain it away and shelve it in the back of my mind. Later, when my mom got home, I told both of my parents what happened. They brushed it off, said I was just imagining things. The second time happened in November of last year, but in between moving in and settling in, finding a new job, my grandmother's health declining, and how scared my mom was, now has been the only time that I've been calm enough to tell the story. This is the story of what I refer to as the mimic. This new house we moved to was built literally a month before we moved in. The neighborhood is still under construction. My mom and I were sitting in the family room, giving each other pedicures. My stepfather had gone out with his grandfather to run some errands. We were watching something on Netflix, and we both heard my stepdad come in through the front door. My mom called out to him, Are you okay? To which we both heard him respond, Yeah, honey, I'm good. We heard him open the garage and go in, and obviously we thought nothing of it. 20 minutes pass, and we both nearly jump out of our skins when my grandfather opens the backyard door in the family room, peeks his head in, and asks us to open the garage when we had a chance so that they could unload the groceries. My mom and I look at each other, again confused, as it seems to be an ongoing theme here. 
And she says, isn't it open? John just came in. We both look at each other and she starts calling out to him, but my grandfather cuts her off and tells her that that's impossible because my stepdad, John, was out back. We go out to look and there, getting out of his car, was my stepdad. So as not to confuse anyone, we have a huge, and I mean huge, backyard, fenced in. My parents are in the midst of fixing up the backyard of this new house, so my grandfather had gone to the home improvement store to pick up some supplies and cement blocks to stand the barbecue on. That's why they brought the car to the back. I look at my mom to see that she has the same petrified look on her face that I did. My stepdad is still getting out of the car, not looking at us, and he goes, Sorry guys, I left the house key by accident. Can you open the garage door so we can unload the groceries? There's a second fridge in the garage. There's six people in one house. My mom takes off inside with me trailing behind her, and lo and behold, the lock on the front door was still on, and the garage door was still locked. I can't even explain how terrifying that was for my mom and I. We don't speak of it. That day, my parents fought for hours. My mom thought it was my stepdad playing some kind of prank on her, but that was clearly not the case. Later that night, when my mom was alone, I approached her. I reminded her of what happened before, and I asked her what she thought about it. My mom looked at me very sharply, dead in the eye, and says, Don't you ever talk about this again. Don't. I didn't think to connect the two experiences until now. I knew I had had a similar experience, but I never thought that it would follow us, but maybe it did? Since then, I haven't encountered the mimic, and that's just fine by me.